A warm welcome to you all as we come to worship today. First, some words from the Psalms, Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the hills, from where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Amen. Our first hymn is a joyful song of praise, singing the faith, 114. Oh, the life of the world is a joy and a treasure. to our prayers. Let us pray. Generous, hospitable God, who turns no one away, welcome each one of us now in this time of worship and gathering and embrace us in your being. We sometimes think that the more we have, the happier we will be. If only, then all will be well. We sometimes turn the other way closing our eyes and ears, ignoring what we see, choosing to neglect those asking for help. Sometimes we refuse a helping hand to those in need. We want to do our thing instead. We do not want to confess these things, but Lord God, in this moment, in this place, in the space that we've been given, Give us the desire to confess our failings and our sins. Renew us from within and set us free from all that shackles us. Set us free to be the human beings you would have us be. Amen. In St Thomas Methodist Church Lampeter, we particularly enjoy singing the Lord's Prayer. And even though we have not been able to do this for a long time, as a congregation, we can sing it today in our own homes. It is Singing the Faith, number 762.
You will now hear our next Bible reading, read by Sylvia. The reading is from Micah, chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised up above the hills and people shall flow to it. And many nations shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the law from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples and shall decide for strong nations afar off and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more, but they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken, for all the peoples walk, each in the name of its God, but we will walk in the name of the Lord our God for ever and ever. Thanks be to God. Our readings today do not come from any lectionary and are not for any particular week of the year, but have been chosen because I found them to be words of inspiration and encouragement as I was reading the Bible as part of my daily quiet time. I'm using the Bible in one year, which was authorised for use by the Methodist Conference of 2010. Every couple of years I turn to this and usually alternate it with another daily discipline of Bible readings. There are disadvantages in the concept of reading through the Bible in a year because it entails reading passages which are possibly not the most helpful like parts of Leviticus. But there are advantages in that nothing is omitted and one reads many passages that would not normally be covered by the lectionary and which are rich in meaning. I have found it a useful method and have learned many things. The other day I learned that God can whistle. There's probably a whole sermon in that. Our psalm is full of encouragement and at present we do need that sense of being spurred on. As lockdown continues it becomes harder to keep motivated. Maybe you feel that things will never return to normal. We were talking recently in our Zoom after worship coffee morning about the form worship will take when we go back to our small English language church here in Lampeter. So far we have not been able to return because of the logistical problems of imposing the necessary safety measures in such a small place. But we are planning to restart services in a week. We are saddened because we will not be able to sing hymns. Maybe we can hum. So much seems to be taken away from us. So a psalm of encouragement is just what we need. The psalmist is on his way up to Jerusalem. It's called a psalm of ascents. He may have companions because this psalm is almost like a conversation. Or maybe he is simply having an internal dialogue. But whatever the context, he is promised protection from anything that could harm him. And his mind leaps from the hills in his sight to the greatness of an invisible God who is able to keep him safe in every way and forever. It's a lively psalm of a pilgrim on his way joyfully to worship. We need to hear that as assurance that we too will be able to worship, even if not in the way we are accustomed, in our own chapels. We are held in the palm of God's hand, loved and secure. Our other Old Testament reading from Micah expresses many of the same hopes. 
These verses are the same as the first verses in the second chapter of Isaiah, and the original source of them is unknown, but the meaning is very plain. In a time of exile, Micah prophesies to the people. The pilgrim believer looks towards Jerusalem, where he imagines crowds of worshippers streaming towards the city. It will be the centre of teaching of God's ways, and God will establish peace among all peoples. To sit under the vine and the fig tree was a proverbial expression that meant there would be calm and prosperity for those living in the countryside. In chapter 7 of this prophecy we read, a day for building your walls. In that day the boundary shall be far extended. Jerusalem will be rebuilt and become well established. It will grow and develop. In a time when God's people are being threatened by foreign influences and are unable to live in freedom, they are reminded that God is fully aware of their situation and is in control. He will care for his beloved people and will bring them to safety and security. We cannot, of course, just extract words from the Bible to reinforce our opinions, but I think we can look to the experiences of God's people down through the centuries and see how God has been with them and has brought them to a place of safety and find reassurance in these words. We sing the hymn, Singing the Faith, 706, Longing for Light, We Wait in Darkness.
third Bible reading is read by David. The New Testament reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 through to verse 18. Treasure in clay jars. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. We have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the likeness of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants, for, Christ, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels to show that the transcendent power belongs to God and not to us. We have afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit as faith as he had who wrote, I believed and so I spoke, we too believe and so we speak, knowing that he who has raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed every day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Because we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Thanks be to God. In our New Testament reading, we can find not only assurance, but also words of inspiration. Once again, God's people are struggling, this time because they are in the midst of unbelievers. Paul makes it clear that they must proclaim the gospel message with clarity and boldness. He suffered greatly because of this, but was determined that, by God's grace, he would be able to carry out his commission to spread the word. He emphasises how important it was that the gospel was not diluted in any way. He uses a word that means the act of diluting wine with water. The Greek word doluntes, from the verb doluo, to explain how vital it is that the message remains pure. Even though it is transmitted by weak humans who are like fragile and disposable earthenware pots, yet the light of the gospel shines out of the darkness. Despite all that Paul suffers for the gospel, he is yet kept alive and able to continue through God's grace. The chapter ends with a note of determination and hope. We look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. We may feel that's all very well, but such boldness is beyond us at the moment. But I don't think it's enough to just stop with the assurance of God's presence. We need to be exploring our role in this current society and we need to be working towards the time when we once again open our church doors and once again we have what we know as normal church life. We must not lose the habit of church attendance 
nor can we forget what it means to live out our Christian witness in the place we live. In Tom Wright's new book, God and the Pandemic, he says that just because our buildings are closed, we can still have an active church. He says, we should therefore celebrate every way in which the living Lord, whom we regularly worship in church buildings, is out and about, bringing healing and hope far beyond the visible limits of church property. Tom Wright says, we should be in our communities as signs of life and hope. We must give the lie to the rumour that the church has become privatised as we worship in our living rooms and work actively to make our presence felt in society. As David Yuan sang, Er gwaitha paub a fopeth, rini ama o heed. Despite everyone and everything, we're still here. We need the assurance of the psalmist and the words of Micah. We need to the challenge of Paul as he urges us to work and witness. We have to look to the future with hope, courage and determination. In this Methodist year, we can take for ourselves the words of John Wesley, that our president of conference, the Reverend Richard Teal, has adopted for his year of office. The best of all is, God is with us. Amen. We come to our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. First, a prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. I'm grateful, Lord God, that you love me and care for me, that Jesus lived and died for me. I'm grateful that you are interested in me, even me with all my faults and failings. Thank you for sharing my life and my living, for being within my hopes and dreams. Thank you for giving me purpose and meaning. Thank you for showing me how to live a life of goodness and truth, a life of caring and sharing. Thank you for your generosity and abundance, even if I fail to see it. Thank you, God, for being you. And thank you for making me, me. Amen. Our prayers of intercession do not have a response this week. I will read them slowly so that you have time to bring each person or situation into mind as you pray. So often we want to pray for others, but sometimes, God, we don't know how. We can't remember names or numbers. Other issues weigh heavily on our hearts. Thank goodness, God, that you know what we mean when we pray. So we bring in this moment those names and faces, images and desires for others that pop in and out of our minds throughout the day. The old lady at the bus stop who needed a hand up the step. The young mum at the checkout trying to contain her four kids. Chap up the road who's lost his dog and is calling for him. The strug teachers struggling to understand the needs of those in their class. The doctors who want to give us more time but who simply can't. The young families who can't make ends meet. Those without work who can't find new jobs. Those helping people to find work knowing it is an uphill struggle. Those with mental health issues and seeking help or who are afraid and ashamed to seek help or who are ignored and can't get help. So God, for all these people and countless others, we offer our prayers. We know you do not need reminding but you do need willing workers, even us, to help them know your love and have their needs met. Hear our ramblings, O oh God. Amen. Our final hymn is Singing the Faith 673. Will you come and follow me?
Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be sure? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you? blessing as we come to the close of our worship. Love, tangible and expressive, transform us. Joy, holy and earthy, uplift us. Peace of heart, home and community, be within us always. Amen. <laughs>